Being the President of the United States comes with some heavy responsibilities. You are essentially responsible for the well-being and safety of 328 million people. That's stressful enough. However, it's not without its perks. You get the White House for your accommodations, an army of staff members, plus a literal army at your command. And let's not forget the fleet of planes, cars, ships, and shoppers at your disposal, ready to transport you and protect you at any time. The last one is now due a massive $4.9 billion upgrade in 2023. But before we can take a look at what's coming in the future, let's look at the current Marine One helicopter fleet. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a video from us. Marine One is any helicopter in the U.S. Marine Corps that happens to be transporting the President of the United States. It's similar to the call sign used for the private jet the President travels in, which is Air Force One. But in common usage, it refers to the fleet of state-of-the-art helicopters reserved for the Commander-in-Chief. The U.S. military adopted using helicopters in the 1940s, but the Secret Service thought it might be too dangerous for the President to use. This didn't change until the Cold War, when the potential for an emergency evacuation in case of a nuclear attack attack increased. The first president ever to travel in a chopper was Dwight D. Eisenhower in a Bell H-13J, a slow, small helicopter that could seat two passengers and a pilot but lauded for its safety feature. Soon enough, they became indispensable, and the Bell was replaced by a slightly larger, more comfortable model. As time went on, newer versions got bigger and more comfortable. The Sikorsky VH-3A was introduced during the Kennedy administration, and the VH-3D entered service during the Carter presidency. Carter switched from that to a VH-60N later in his term. Along with updates to provide comfort and convenience, the choppers have seen upgrades in their flight times and security too. The current fleet in use contains 11 Sikorsky VH-3D Sea Kings, 8 VH-60N helicopters, and 4 test training helicopters. The Sea King can travel up to 161 miles per hour, and the range depends on the facilities on board since Marine One choppers carry more gear and equipment. The VH-60N can travel up to 1,200 nautical miles, which is significantly more than the Blackhawks at 362 miles. It has a top speed of 183 miles per hour and is referred to as the White Hawk. When the President requires his fleet abroad, there are a few ways it can be transported. It's not exactly the helicarrier from the Avengers, but it's still pretty impressive. Impressive. They use the C-17 Globemaster or the C-5 Galaxy to transport the fleet. The Boeing Globemaster is a $366.2 million military aircraft that can hold two helicopters. It is designed to operate from short runways and even unpaved rough terrains, although that can cause some damage. The Lockheed Galaxy costs $224.29 million and can carry six choppers plus the President's limousine. On board the helicopter, there is state-of-the-art encrypted mission communications technology and the Collins Aerospace Proline communication and navigation radios, which gives Marine One full satellite communication capabilities. The cockpit boasts two high-tech display control panels and four multifunctional display units. Additionally, there's a traffic collision avoidance system, a health and usage monitoring system, an enhanced ground proximity warning system, and an advanced weather radar. All this and more justifies the hefty price tag. You'd think that being specced out in security and communication features, there wouldn't be much room for aesthetic design. But the truth is, these cabins can be quite spacious and luxurious, and the design changes as per administration. For example, during the Obama administration, it was mostly gray upholstery with thick blue curtains and wood trimmings. There was quite a change during the Trump administration with light cream seats, polished wood grains, and chrome-plated accents, which is incidentally similar to the style of his private Boeing 757 jet. The helicopters also have bathrooms. Because of these frequent changes and updates, the helicopter's operational capabilities get lower as the years go by. After the September 11 attacks on the Twin Towers, there was widespread agreement in the government that the Marine One helicopter needed to have its communication, transportation, and security systems updated. So in 2002, the Department of Defense began the VXX program, which gave the Navy the responsibility to design new presidential helicopters. Two companies started bidding for the contract, Lockheed Martin and Sikorsky Aircraft. The former won the contract of $6.1 billion in 2005, and the job was to develop and 
build 28 helicopters. But by 2008, the $6.1 billion budget was slowly ballooning up to $11.2 billion. Eventually, in 2009, the whole thing was called off due to cost overruns. When it started back up in 2014, the Navy awarded Sikorsky Aircraft a $1.24 billion contract to build six presidential helicopters designated Sikorsky VH-92. Marine One helicopters are all equipped with infrared countermeasure devices to protect the president from any missile attacks. They also have flares to counter heat-seeking missiles, throw them off course, and chaff to counter radar-guided missiles. The VH-60N has two infrared countermeasure devices on its underside, and the White Hawk has the same on its underside and on the roof. Additionally, it has ballistic armor to protect the president. All copters also feature electromagnetic pulse protection in the event of a nuclear explosion. For extra protection, up to five or six identical chopters fly alongside the one the president is sitting in during each trip. So if the president is in a VH-3D, there will be several other VH-3Ds in the sky. If it's a VH-60N, the rest of his entourage will be flying in VH-60Ns as well. Plus, after takeoff, they continuously shift formations and positions to hide the location of the president. Kind of like how street magicians place a pebble under a cup and shuffle around five cups, then ask you to pick the one with the pebble in it. The fleet is operated by the Marine Helicopter Squadron 1, which includes over 800 Marines. In addition to ensuring the president's safe travel, their responsibility is to transport the vice president, heads of state, the Department of Defense, and other VIPs. Marine One Fleet is based at the Marine Corps Air Facility in Quantico, Virginia. The squadron also operates out of its base in Washington. When the president needs a ride, the helicopters travel to the south lawn of the White House and are always met by a U.S. Marine in full uniform. When it's a long-distance trip, the chopper will take the president to the Joint Base Andrews Naval Air Facility, where Air Force One is. For longer journeys, the president has the Boeing 747-200B, which typically costs about $260 million, but with their additional security equipment, that would run much higher. He also has a Cadillac One named the Beat. It is equipped with many life-saving offensive and defensive features. When riding in this car, he is cut off from the outside world completely, but he has an extensive range of communication gear at hand, including a facility to dispatch the codes necessary to fire nuclear weapons. Because when don't you need those? He also has a giant black armored bus called Ground Force One, designed by the Secret Service, which cost $1.1 million. It is fitted with secure communication gear, heavily reinforced glass, and all the office equipment necessary. The presidential transportation fleet used to include the USS Sequoia, a 104-foot long yacht that was last used in the Carter administration. The Air Force One jets are due an upgrade, as is the entire Marine One fleet, by the way. The U.S. government is spending $4.9 billion for the complete replacement. By 2023, all 23 Marine One helicopters will be Sikorsky VH-92As. Manufacturing cost aside, the new Marine One will come with a hefty price tag given all the features it will come with. Not much is known about its features or the interiors, but a group of pilots from the squadron will test the aircraft for the government to ensure everything's in tip-top shape. If you happen to live in the Washington metropolitan area, you might just get a glimpse of the test runs. Do you think the president needs so many means of travel at one time? Let us know your take in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and check out similar videos on the King Luxury channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.